global variables. Global variables are a great way to work with functions so that we can actually see variables outside of the scope of the function. And if you look here, we have this little global keyword. That means that this can be visible inside a function. But the only way you can actually see it is to actually use that global keyword inside the function where you want to actually use that variable. So that doesn't sound confusing if you've looked at the variable scope video, and that is going to explain that you can't just start using variables that live out here inside a function. They're not going to be visible because they're only going to be local to that particular function. So you can see the output that we have here, and we're going to show some information. I'll also show you what global variables can be set based on the global built-in array that we've mentioned earlier. And this is in the built-in arrays video. But we can take a peek here. We have global string, and then we set it. So we have to set it up as a global, and then we set this string. We have an integer, another integer, and then some other integer there. Now we're going to check int, meaning that we're going to check this first one and call the function check. Now it doesn't matter. Function is afterwards. The check function is there. It doesn't matter if it's before or after. PHP will take care of it for you. It really is up to you how you want to do that. In ActionScript, in Flash, I would put my functions after I need them in the same page or in another include file. But in PHP, I normally like to have my functions first. It really is up to you. Functions tend to take up a lot of space. And it really is a better approach to put them in different files. But anyway, we call check. Dollar sign $i is what is going to be the parameter. And you can see that it's going to echo the string before str. And then it's going to echo str after we tell it that it's a global. Let's peek at that. str hello. str here was nothing. So it didn't know what it was. It wasn't set. Here we're saying, oh, okay, it's a global. Then it knows to take that global variable. And we'll later learn that global variables are stored in arrays after we use that global keyword. And that is going to allow us to look at them. I is going to be a thousand here, and that's what int is passed in with that function. We see here that the I, the first parameter, was passed in a thousand from int, but that came in the standard way for a function, but locally dollar sign int inside the function wasn't set. And that's what's shown here. Dollar sign I, that's really int if it's passed like this. And then when we try to echo it, it's not there. We have to use global. And there it is again, another example global, we do some things to it, we manipulate this variable, we manipulate that variable, because when we do plus plus here, it's going to add one to it, and then we echo those two out, they're going to change. And then you can approach things a different way here if you want to, using the globals built in array. And there's no underscore there, just globals with the dollar sign, and then you can see that we can put str in single or double quotes, we can set that, and then echo it out. Let's see what that looks like. There it is. Goodbye. So it's changed. So now we know that those globals can be used like a regular array. You just need to know the name. So in order to get the names, sometimes we need to actually do a for each. And this is the syntax for doing that. Globals as a key and a value. This is just the syntax to get the key and the value. And then we can actually process the key like any other array. In this example, we're going to say, all right, well, you know what? If we have this LS colors and we have path and we have server software, well, we're not going to echo that because that's going to be so long that it's going to make this page really, really grow to the outside. So I automatically took those out there. You can experiment and comment this out and see what the page is going to look like. It's going to change the structure of the page. It depends on if you're using something from your server and it has a lot of path information and colors and all that, it's going to break it out. But we're going to exclude those. If the key is not one of these, we're going to echo. Otherwise, we're going to exclude them. And then we just echo the key and the value, and you can see that's what we have here. The different types of global arrays that we can have, as you can see. And what's returned is the value, but it's really an array. It's an array. And the reason that it's different, the reason that it's different there with the arrays here is that these are the built-in arrays and you notice that they have underscores and we've taken a look at them. And the reason why they're 
arrays is that that's the type they are. So we're not going to look at those here. We would have to further look at those arrays. So those are like multidimensional arrays because it's an array of arrays. But those can be ignored because these are globals, but they're not going to be used in our example. You can also exclude those as well if you wanted to, or check for the type and ignore anything that's an array type and just look for what we have here. The ones that we set specifically to global. Goodbye, which is str. This 1000 is set into int, etc., etc. These are all global in scope now, and they're going to live in that global array. And you can process them, you can work with them, and that's where they're going to live. So they're going to be stored in memory. They're going to be stored in a certain way that we're going to have access to them. And it's for this page. If we slide a little down, we can see that eventually we echo out those strings that were changed inside that function. But now we're going to look at the globals. Like I said, this is the list of them. And then we have some other function here at the very, very bottom. And now it's going to do a version compare to make sure that we have version 4.3 or greater, and this is a version compare, a function here that we can use. PHP version is another function. You can look up how they work, but this is basically how they work. And then we're going to do a for each on the globals in the same way, and we're going to use the double dollar sign here to actually get the value of that global, and this is a cool way to do it. I've explained this. You want to see the definition of variables in the beginning if you need an explanation on the double dollar sign here. This allows us to actually either set this or get these values in a very easy way. And that's some function that we're calling there. It's just created as a function. And this allows us to either set them or get them, and you don't have to really put much more effort into writing things out like this, for example, and putting more complex ways of, of grabbing those global variables. So you can use it as you wish. That's really just an, an added benefit for you, as you can see. So global variables are great. You just need to take care of them and you can unset them and set them as you need to. Unset will work as well. And we've looked at that with regular variables and even arrays.